This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 723 episodes we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the quarantine bunker at Sorgatron Media Studios. Staying safe, staying away from people. Rob, the Rob came in last week and ruined everything. No, it's not the reason, but <laughs> we are back. Um, I mean, maybe everybody's got to be quarantined for a week for reasons, but uh, you can see a video of me sticking stuff up my nose to try to find out if I have a problem or not. Uh, over and he also my... got a COVID test. And I also got a COVID test. Yes. Ah. Also with me on the line from Beacon, New York, from his own personalized uh, Lego museum slash uh, uh, Mad Mike bunker. Mad Mike. In brightest day in blackest night no podcast shall escape my sight for those who think that randy orton's fight beware my opinions mad mike is right <laughs> there you go and that sums up that was, ah. his position on the show pretty much entirely yeah pretty much also with us professional wrestler i think <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting props. What's <laughs> also with us, professional wrestler and D and D player, as we'll talk about later on the show. Tatiana Rose is with us. Hello, everybody. If you're wondering what's on my hand, it's what happened to my last husband. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's where she keeps his balls. Oh. <laughs> um, and I don't have a segue for that one. Tony Kincaid's with us, uh, announcer with 2PW and RWA. How you doing, sir? Also a D&D player. Super confused. Uh, I guess we're all using props right now. So okay. Wait, wait, wait. we're getting props. Give me a sec. What are, what are we doing? Where's she going? Oh, no, we're not. We're not. Actually, she's gone. Wait, sorry, she's, <laughs> she's just, she's yes. Gone. Hold on. We're Avengers. Okay. Avengers. Okay. Avengers <laughs> we did it. We did it, everyone. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just end the show now. It's not going to get. We kind of have to. We kind of have to now. Sorg. Um, oh my God! Sorg is our Nick Fury. I, I cover your eye. Hold Sorg, on a second. Even, hold on. A you second. even have to stay hidden, like cover like your Nick eye. Fury does. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 We did it. Yes. All right. We have. Done there it. was an idea. <laughs> there was an idea to gather a very special collection of podcasters to talk about professionalized wrestling. Sword, sword, off the cuff. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. There you go. So you Welcome to the Wrestling that. Mayhem Show. This is what we do. Sometimes we get to professionalized wrestling, and I'm going to try to read the notes like this with only one eye. Because actually, this plays into the wrestling match we're going to talk about this weekend. So this all comes together. Um, anyways, this is what Seth Rollins is probably going to look like after Sunday. Who knows? And, I'm looking and forward to pirate if Seth Rollins. Rey Mysterio, he's just gonna wa- brush off that old Daredevil outfit. That's right. It, it works out. Okay, <laughs> let's see if I can read with one eye the notes. I can't even click the right tabs anymore. This is the Wrestling oh, Mayhem oh, Show. Please oh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. Make sure it's in there under "Call My Wife When I'm Drunk." Uh, so that you get us instead, and trust me, he'll probably be better off in the end. Also, hit us on the Twitter at Mayhem Show, Facebook page, and group for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show group on Facebook is where a lot of great discussion is happening. Some not great discussions sometimes too, but but you want to be there for all of it. Um, and also we are here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live on. Uh, Periscope, the Twitter, uh, YouTube, Twitch for Sorgatron Media, and you can see it on any format. Chromecast it to your TV from YouTube, however you like to check the show. I can't read the chat room because I can't. I don't have enough eyes right now. Uh, it's okay. I got you. Rob Brown up. says he has uh, a screen worn shield ID badge. 
There you go. There you go. I actually, I actually is, have my own shield ID badge at my mom's place. My I got it at Comic Con. I, I, I have every uh, jumping fandoms. I have every uh, sunk screwdriver ever made. So there you go. There, <laughs> now that we're all putting our nerd dicks on the table. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have those. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, you guys, you guys. This is all I have. I'm a terrible nerd. <laughs> No, no, we're just. Really oh, wait till people bad. see your D and D promo. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, our patron supporters at patreoncom slash wrestling mayhem show. Um, well, there's a lot of people supporting this. I'm going to attempt to read their names right now. First of all, thank you, our friends at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! As well as see, I didn't even. Ow. I can't even switch right. We're on Tatiana for like no reason. <laughs> You need both eyes to multitask. That's what I'm learning right now. Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, and Team Hammer Fist. Don't do anything weird over there because I'm I'm reading these things over here. Uh, at the oh Poppy Club, God. at the Poppy Club level, our friends Bradley uh, Brothers, Dave Bonner, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys. At the Pizza Club level, with Doc Remedy and Kyle Turner. And at the Manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. Thank you so much. You guys can support the show too at um, patreoncom wrestling Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> They're still doing weird stuff over there. You know, my peripheral vision that's not working right now. So, this is very appropriate because this weekend, of course, I feel like we talked about every show there's an eye for an eye match. Let's just hold off on that for a minute. And coming soon to SummerSlam, a tooth for a tooth match. There you go. There you go. Aggression coming back to WWE. I was looking forward to... Ooh, no, 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 no. That's the... Here's the line, and here is you over here. No, no. Wow. Mm-hmm. That hey, it's, 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 worse. it's 2020. Nothing can really get that much worse. I, oh, don't, I don't say know. that! I do. No, not on that. wood. What are you doing? Like, are, are you I'm, reading a, I'm reading a comment in the chat. Dave Podner says it's 2020. We're all fucked. Okay. He's not wrong. Okay. That's it. It's not going to so we're not more fucked because legitimately the only, thing is, the only thing this has been lacking, 2020 has lacked a zombie apocalypse. Zombie that, and, uh, that is arguable. That is incredibly arguable. Yeah, actually, you, did you watch that Disney video? Oh, yeah. Never mind. We did have a zombie apocalypse. Never mind. Anyways, there's a pay per view, wrestling pay per view this weekend. That's the most important thing to talk there's about two right of now. Them, technically. There's two of them, technically. Slam anniversary. I don't even know who's still on it anymore because everybody has either been canceled, has COVID, or got rehired by their own company. So who knows? Yeah, they're having the weirdest fatal four way elimination match. I know that because two of the guys in the match. <laughs> Left the company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's two of the people in the match. Excuse me. Tesla it it is a it is a smoldering heap in in many corners of professional wrestling <laughs> in some cases. <laughs> but uh, but WWE is somehow finding the the uh, the effort to do a, a pay per view uh, pre pre a pre taped pay per view in front of a live uh, captive audience. Um, but, yeah, and captive by mean yeah. they can't leave. No, they can't. They're not allowed to leave. <laughs> being the operative word here, yes. they cannot well, leave. For they two have weeks. To, here's the thing: they needed the crowd to get the cheers, to get the reaction, and all that. But they also needed to self quarantine all of those people. Might as well put the pay per view on. That's yeah, right. just, just so keep let's, them there. So let's mm-hmm. take two birds, it. one stone. Let's, I I don't see why we can't have a Zoom audience. <laughs> like pay pay forty pay no I, I'm dead serious about this. Pay forty bucks, you get to be in a Zoom audience in the crowd. There's Ooh. one for e- like each state of the country, and it's just everyone watching the pay per view at the same time, and we're all reacting. Yeah, it just it, but uh, but none of the yeah. the reactions sync up because it's all like on Either that different or get individualized monitors put us on uh, Wrestle Buddies and put us in the front row. Mm. And have us really respond live, like really, like Max Headroom style, mm-hmm. like Max <laughs> Headroom. There you go. <laughs> when the cheers stutter, you know what's going on. Um, so, so there is a pay per view this weekend. There is a swamp fight, which my, Mike pointed out to me is not for the championship. You are correct. What? I yep. I don't even know what to do with that information. Um, because I, I also have not been, I, I, I've stayed on the other show. I'm sorry. I left the microphone cause I'm trying to find things and I have only 
Where's where did I? I we put we 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 all put our props down, Sork. You can yeah. Take, like, oh, I can take this you, off you, now. Yeah, we can. You, okay, this is. Okay. You're okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you've, you you've, you've sold the bed. You can move on. I've sold the bed. I can move on. I sold yeah. the I sold the bed in the blue shoe. We well, can move on to the next. Just you're a life model decoy whose both eyes work. Um. Okay. Oh, now now they're weird in a different way. Uh. Anyways, mm -hmm. so so now you know why pirates wore eye patches. <laughs> no, I don't. What do we what? Pirates wore eye patches, so when it became dark, they would flip the eye, and they could see better at night. Oh, uh, um, um, day eye, night eye. Yes. That's <sighs> it. That's actually really clever. <laughs> I'm going to well, try that. I'm going to well, do that now. That way, whenever I eventually get snuck up on in the dark, I just see them coming. It's like I have an eye. I just flip it, and it's like, I see you. I can grapple you now. That's how you sleep with one eye open. Gripping your pillow tight. And <laughs> we did oh, it, y'all. Oh. <laughs> we did it again. Bump, set, and spike. spike. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be a long show. Um, but anyways, uh, so there's a swamp fight. We hope somebody fights an alligator. You can't get COVID from an alligator. Um, and, I hope Skinner uh, shows up. You hope what? Skinner. Skinner. Oh, jeez, that'd Wait, be that'd be no, great. No, that's that's legitimately what I'm hoping for. Mm -hmm. Because if we can have Doink the Clown running around the fucking Stanford office for a Money in the Bank <laughs> match for no reason, we can have Skinner in a goddamn swamp. That's true. That's true. That needs to happen. Um, is he still? He's not still with the. He got let go like along with FCW, right? I think so. He's got to be bouncing around. I but mean, now I'm also looking to see if Waylon Mercy is still alive. Mm, let's just go the full way with this. Um, Waylon Mercy is still alive because I yeah, Dan Spivey is still alive. Yeah, we also we do have a championship match. It's going to be uh, we don't know the stipulation. Mike uh, speculated oh. at a stipulation last night, so I want to extend that question to our guests tonight. Um, what 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 stipulation do you think Dolph Ziggler will bring to the match against drew mcintyre tony probably probably is like something completely stupid where he gets to bump around a thousand times and look like Shawn michaels in against hulk hogan no in all <laughs> seriousness uh it'll, it'll probably be something with bagpipes it'll be like a bagpipe match bagpipe where match? Has bagpipes on the pole match that's my that's my guess okay tatiana I I just had this. I think uh, the stipulation is going to have something to do with like a Spear Squad street fight. <laughs> Sword said that That's last mine! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's going to bring but, back all the Spirit Squad. <laughs> but but I think I think it's actually probably, I'll bet it's like reminiscent of something to do like when McIntyre first came up in the WWE and teamed with Ziggler for the first time. It'll be like some sort of nostalgia trip to try to bring McIntyre back to his roots. My memory is fried because I've been awake for a very long time. Oh. So I can't, can't think uh, clearly. Uh, but Like a broken uh, dreams match or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bring back all the B. If it's like a broken dreams match that like has the same mechanics as a Firefly Funhouse match. Only, only if Dixie Carter shows up. No. No. no! no! And everyone starts calling him Galloway for no reason. It's like, hey, Galloway. What? <laughs> Who? What? Got Where? you. <laughs> we or do like if when Ziggler came out, the performance center magically turned into the impact zone. We're like two blocks down from each other, I think. So. Yeah. I'm sure they can borrow it. Um, I hope. They can rent now, it. See, now I hope thing. there's like. See, now I hope there's like a promo. Where uh, Ziggler tries to get into McIntyre's head, says, "Come on, don't you got any balls, Galloway? I don't know. Don't you have any bleach, Nikki? Mm -hmm. oh, hell yeah! You're there. He just bombards Ziggler with photos of him with brown hair. Like, wasn't this a terrible decision? Wasn't <laughs> it a terrible decision? I, it could be a two. It also could be a two-on-one handicap match with Jinder Mahal mm -hmm. and be a three MB match. So." I think gender. I think gender is hindered by injured. Oh, <laughs> I hate that you said yeah, that. And that. You had to go for the walk like that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hey, we it always works. say don't hinder gender, but now yes. an injury is hindery gingery. So uh, I am all uh, hinder gingery dog. Like yeah, actual what? no. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this is why I had clock. to get one fan because it's the only one I'm gonna have. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize so much to our live studio audience because wait, 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 Mike. So it's your only fan. You got it. You got it. And this is the sneak preview. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, man. We're going for a lot of walks tonight. Uh, we do have women's wrestling represented. We do have. Sure, if wrestling was more entertaining, we would talk more. I I, I will be will be venturing into more entertaining wrestling, I think, later. Potter already got the story, as as I was very excited about New Japan, and I'm not even caught up on it yet. But anyways, uh, we do have Sasha and Asuka, and we have Bailey mm-hmm. and Nikki Cross happening on the show. Both, I hope, are titled matches, it looks like. They are. Yeah. They, Those they are, are going to be great. Yeah. So do Those we officially good. have four matches on this show at this point? Because um, Big Show and Randy five, got sh- five, shifted to Monday. Five. Uh, Apollo Crews versus MVP. All right, and we do have Jeff Hardy and uh, Sheamus in a, in a bar fight. Bar fight, and this is why I've been avoiding SmackDown. That and karaoke. Uh, so it just hasn't yeah. been worth my effort, and um, you know, I so I mean, I, I'm still sitting there during Raw, and Raw hasn't been half bad, but there's still just like that moment every Monday where I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Um, so I, I think I think we're also probably going to get AJ Styles versus Matt Riddle. That makes sense. So they're supposed to be having that match as long as they're both disease free. That match is actually so they do have that match pegged for Friday. Um, but oh, really? but there could okay. be I I don't know I, you know I don't know if that's something they shove onto there or if they just have it happen on Friday at this oh, point. Oh, we're probably gonna get New Day versus um, Cesaro and Nakamura in a tag team tables match. Okay, okay. If I, if I had to guess based on what's been happening on SmackDown, okay, that's probably gonna be the sec. That's probably gonna be the second best match on the card. One of the women's mm-hmm. matches is gonna take the best because you've got Sasha, Bailey, Asuka. And Nikki Cross, yeah. and those four uh, women are some of the best workers on the roster. Period. Mm-hmm. So I'm expecting a good match from at least one of the, one of those matchups is going to steal match of the night. But New Day versus Cesaro and uh, Nakamura is probably going to steal second. Mm-hmm. It is interesting. Like WWE is is versus. Well, wow, my color is changing over here again um but but the wwe has definitely been um um leaning t- more towards this like we the pay-per-views have been like what the hell can we do what the hell is going to happen with this more than anything haven't they um with uh, uh the swamp fight the bar fight the i mean who knows what random stipulation could be some cinematic well, match the eye for well. an eye match is probably going to be eye for an eye. Too. yeah it's like well, it's 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 hard to book when you're you when you have to book week by week. I mean, you don't know who's going to get sick. Yeah. Tomorrow, you have to test everyone. You know, all the time, and you know this. That's just they they have to create these matches. That, I, I don't know. This, as as Sork tries to color correct. Um, just keep going. He, Nothing's happening. No, 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 no. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to book for these things. The problem is, is like if if you're gonna have to book like on like a week-to-week basis shouldn't you at least book like good things that i want to see like as a fan like don't don't take me wrong i love seth rollins and i love Rey mysterio but an eye for an eye match like what? How, how did we get here which was basically but, seth rollins promo the other day well i i still like i still hope i don't know how we get to where i want this to go now i still want somehow dominic to cost ray the win and declare himself as Dominic Guerrero. I, I really want this. I might, Mike, Lord. I think you're going to have to come to terms with the idea that this is nowhere on anybody's um, know, radar, God, especially with especially be. with Vicky not being part of the company anymore. Yeah, like Vicky doesn't have to be part of the company. She doesn't have to be, but still, but well, still, she wasn't involved in that match either. She was like two yeah. minutes late. So yeah, but she's kind of the last like connection, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we can bring back Aiden, we can bring back Aiden English. Chavo. Wait, what? Oh, I could she he married. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Aiden By English. Marriage. By he married Charles Guerrero. He married in. Yeah. Yeah. By marriage. Just like how John Laronitis is a Bella. Exactly. Johnny Bella. Johnny Bella Power. Bella. 
I see the only way for the Rey Mysterio Seth Rollins match to end well is for one of them to blindfold the ref and then stick the ref's hands into a bowl of peeled eyes or peeled uh, grapes and say, "Look at all the <laughs> eyes." <laughs> Uh, no one had a middle school Halloween party in their lives. Oh, the old, the, the old Halloween trick. I love I'm it. I'm more concerned that your first way of explaining that was saying peeled eyes. And now that visual is stuck in my head and it's disturbing. Peeled mm-hmm. eyes are just normal eyes without their, their, uh, their, um, lids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not how I'm thinking of them. <laughs> <laughs> Or what? What is the sack that the eyes in that you have to cut open for LASIK? The I'm eyes. Not sure. No, there's I... like a, there's like a film over your eye. Tatiana's looking yeah. for a visual representation. Okay. No, I'm there's. I, I'm concerned that uh, some of my housemates. I, I I might have forgotten to mention that I was uh, on a video call, and I'm concerned that some of my housemates are going to walk in and be like, "Hey, hey, why aren't you doing this thing?" Hmm. Hmm. So, so I'm just, and remember, yeah. I've got the room with the door that doesn't shut. Oh, nice. So, so. That's, that's good. We'll let you know if anyone thinks up behind you. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be fun. They can be part of the show. Um, <laughs> to, 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 to be fair, why is this called the horror show at Extreme Rules? And why oh, is that so the on guard. the mark? <laughs> why is that so on the nose? Yeah. Because we have to do everything super, super obvious these days. Well, they, everything has to have a gimmick now because the gimmick isn't live crowds. <laughs> wrestling was never supposed to be gimmicked about live crowds. Wrestling was just supposed to be gimmicked when R- Vince Russo showed up. But sports entertainment is supposed to be gimmicked with live crowds. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, well said. And then Slammiversary doesn't – Impact doesn't have a World Heavyweight it, Champion. It, it's, and it's going to be EC3. I mean, right? Right. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it, it's it's like, and don't get me wrong, if that's ha- if that's what happens, great. I love EC3. That's not gonna get me to watch Impact again Mm-mm. because Mm-mm. they have me blocked on Twitter. But good for him. <laughs> good for him if that if that's where where he wants to go. Um, I personally don't want to see him in AEW. I don't. I think he's rife for like a Ring of Honor run. Okay. Okay. Like I think I think he'd crush it in Ring of Honor personally. Uh, so uh, EC3 uh, Shane Taylor feud. Let's uh let's ro- let's roll it. Cool. Put that out there in the world. You know what? I think he'd be a great fit for uh, RWA or 2PW too. While we're at it, so <laughs> there you go. Hey, um, Side Underground is always looking for people. Mm-hmm. Right, EC3, come underground. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, well, uh, hey. we are really reaching for the top apples there. <laughs> 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 well, you're reaching for the top one, top one percent. Okay, right. so like. Listen, it never hurts to ask. Right. Yes. Ever. Nope. Never nope. hurts to ask. Nope. And that, be, that being said, Fight Underground has some immense talent, as does RWA, as this 2PW, which you can all watch on IndieWrestling.us. And that brings it around to the ad. Guys, go check out IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. Still a lot of fantastic content going on over there, uh, including uh, Indie, Indie Mayhem Show uh, podcast is happening, um, back catalogs for 2PW, RWA, uh, um, the precursor to Fight Underground. Sorry, segue. Uh, Rise Wrestling with a Y, and uh, so much more on VOD, on DVD. If you like your, if you like your physical media, and of course, a lot happening over at IndieWrestling.network. A lot of great back catalog, over 300 hours of content. Works on uh, all your mobile device, wherever you can Chromecast. You know, just like this, the same as what New Japan does. Uh, and I don't have that funky app that make, that you need on your iPhone to make it work on Chromecast. I don't get that. But it works, whatever. I'm having a lot of fun watching that. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, probably. Uh, but no, go check it out. And of course, uh, in association with IndieWrestling.us, uh, working with a lot of uh, great promotions uh, for new wrestling during this crazy time. The training sessions and the quarantine challenge uh, with Prospect Pro Wrestling that uh, uh, Tony actually has been a part of uh, on the commentary side. Yes. And uh, we talked about that in the past, of course, and uh, a lot of great matches going on there. And, uh, and of course, uh, we have Fight Underground, a new uh, match dropped tonight with Ronnie Nicole and Scarlett. So go check that out on the uh, Fight Underground FU Throwdown social medias. 
out there. Tatiana Rose is a part of that promotion. You can see her in the audience watching intensely, I'm sure, uh, during that match. So stay tuned for all of that. Check out, uh, and of course, all that's getting shared over the IndieWrestling.us Facebook. And another new thing that is starting up, the reason we have our guest tonight, uh, there's a new, new, new attempt at something called Top Rope Tabletop. Um, where, uh, so, so, uh, uh, Tony, Tatiana, tell me a little bit about this concept that's coming up here. Ladies first. Alrighty. So, um, a couple months ago when quarantine really first kicked off, uh, basically I came up with a, I put out like a random thing saying, Hey, who wants to play D and D? And a lot of people got interested and it kicked off basically, uh, it kicked off a long now long-standing tradition well weekly tradition of wrestlers wasting time every saturday night while we have no shows going on and it was very consistent it kept going it was what got us all through quarantine for a while and with that being said an idea an idea was brought up to stream one of those dnd sessions and dnd of course is dungeons and dragons the timeless nerdy game of fantasy and awesomeness and so with a little bit of planning a little bit of creating and a whole lot of videoing failures <laughs> none of which you will see we put together the upcoming session there you go which will be which will be this Friday, not this Saturday, as I made the mistake on my promo. That's okay. We fixed it in editing. <laughs> That's what post is for. Yep. No, um, and so the, the people involved right now are me, Tatiana, uh, uh, Brohemoth, uh, Justin Idol, and our DM is the Bearcat Keith Holt. And uh, that is super exciting. Uh, we're all starting level ones, so we're all creating brand new characters. Um and building from scratch for this uh i know we're all i i know i'm hoping this kicks off i, I thought i independent to to tatiana and and keith i i was kind of like thinking like how would i pitch this idea to sorg because i'm a huge D D fan and and i'm a huge let's see what we can do with media fan and uh they were doing it while i was thinking about how to pitch and i was like oh i'm gonna jump on this so <laughs> uh, you know i'm super excited to do this i'm super excited for friday and i want you all to tune in because we as as wrestlers and as commentators non-wrestling personalities we get to uh tell stories um in a medium of professional wrestling and we have not been able to do that as consistently as we would like now we're going to take our passions for wrestling and move those passions to the tabletop gaming. And uh, we want you guys to come with us because, you know, there's there's some things that we're cooking that uh, I think you guys would all enjoy the watch. So a, a little bit as leaking out, the, the first promo came out today and Tatiana's and, and Justin Idols will be coming out in the next 24 hours as well. But uh, there, there, there's been these um, um, kind of promos going on to kind of introduce your characters that are that are going to be coming up in the D&D session. Uh, I say, Tony, your, yours came up today, of course, so with you as, as the bard. Uh, Gideon. Gideon. Gideon the bard. Uh, Gideon Fladro. Mm -hmm. Get his last name right. It's mm -hmm. important. Is this where I cover the screen and I become him? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm showing it right now. Everybody's seeing <laughs> okay. it right now. Oh, oh, <laughs> Big really guitar and everything. <laughs> I need some time travel magic in order to go along with that trend. So, <laughs> so uh, no, it's it's exciting. Are you going to show the promo or no? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just showing it over you. That's fine. Okay, cool. So, is it like uh, a wrestling themed D and D game? Because I I'm I'm a I'm a virgin when it comes to D and D. Like I know a little bit about it, but not. I've never done it before. No, I don't think it's going to be wrestling themed. Uh, mm -hmm. Although, um, being a fan of the Adventure Zone, I know that there are there are ways that we could do that. Okay. In the mm -hmm. future. I used to I used to do like e fetting, which I know is vastly different from D and D, but it's kind of similar because oh. there's like storytelling and like like a show booker, which would be like a DM at that point. But it's uh, I think it's just going to be like a a good old just a little quick adventure for good old pals 
gonna go beat up some monsters. Mm-hmm. Gideon's gonna sing some songs. My character Hexalian, he's gonna try his best. He's going, God, he's going to try his best. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one I, I'm gonna I'm going to try to keep very, very little uh public about Hexalian for now, but I will tell you guys he is dumb as a bag of rocks. <laughs> Oh, good. We're sh- like and we're showing the the we're, we're sneak previewing the visuals from your uh, promo about him uh, right now, so <laughs> <laughs> so people can get a little bit of a visual idea on this uh, if you're joining us on video. <laughs> I just saw you fall. So okay, so he's the ninth doctor. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm literally just watching the visual and not hearing any of the. <laughs> but it it's looks fine. Like you... It's fine. It's fine because the ninth doctor got to date Billy Piper, so it's fine. I can deal no. with it. No, just he didn't. Shows, everyone he lived. Did not. He, he did almost. Not. Got... He, he got almost. Did. Did. David Tennis got the right. Everyone. All right, the ninth doctor also got to kiss Jack. Cat, Jack and so Jack Artness. Like come right. On. So that's a point in his favor. But yeah. Let's just wear everything out here. He kissed them both, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a problem here. Yeah, no, no, no yeah. issue at all. No, yeah, you're right. Um, no but yes, I, I meant it as a compliment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant it as a straight up compliment as someone who legit just finished watching the Eccleston season of Doctor Who. Again. So vast. So vast. Well, now that you said that, like but now that you've said that, now I'm like thinking back to the outfit I put on to become Hex Alien. It's like, oh, oh wow, it does. It does. It's it right does. there. It's, it's right there. there. Yeah, it was right. Like, I, I forgot what we were talking about for a split second. I just saw someone pop up into the frame into a dark black leather jacket. I'm like, oh, hello, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> how do you how do you bounce back from that? Uh, we're we're no, we're super excited. We're super excited to to try this out. We're super excited to have you guys come along for the ride. And uh Hopefully this becomes a thing a la some of the other uh, tabletop uh, media projects out there. Yep. Um, only with your favorite independent wrestlers and personalities. Yeah, well, while, while we're at it, I'll queue it up. I'll give you a preview of Justin Idols as well. It's kind of interesting if you guys are familiar with One Cool Cat. Uh, he's He's been on the show several. Actually, our first interview was with him and his uh, partner. Justin Idol was... doing something interesting. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> So, um, and also, if you're unfamiliar, and in and, and you too, uh, Mike, uh, we also have on our network um, another D and D podcast, uh, Bark Mystery Tour. That kind of well, the same, you know, kind of the same idea. If you you want to kind of follow along with a D and D kind of thing, and they they actually write songs and produce songs along with the show to go along with it. So it's a it's kind of a fun concept too. So um, and there there's a little bit of Justin Idol in his suave getup. He looks like he's straight out of like. Hercules the TV show. Uh is my first thought. <laughs> so oh, awesome. That I'm waiting, I'm waiting. That's awesome. No, uh, the, I think of all the people, that's phenomenal. That is so good. I think of I think of all the people we, we could have pulled out. We pulled we pulled um four very distinct personalities mm-hmm. in wrestling mm-hmm. that all are united by the fact that we're all humongous nerds that working professional wrestling <laughs> so and then bearcat which is who is a phenomenally wonderful person and and i have not this is actually my first time i'm going to be able to work with him uh and it's going to be him trying to kill me which is super exciting fantastic and it's it, it, it's you know thank okay you. go ahead i will say one thing since i have worked with keith as a dm before keith does not actively try to seek out to kill his players I do though. <laughs> <laughs> Great, friendly fire. It's nice. It's nice to know all of her cone attacks are going to be right in my face. <laughs> Just as well, everybody dies. <laughs> all, all her cone, all her spherical radius attacks are going. I'm going to have to th- roll wisdom throws. <laughs> okay, okay. I I will say one thing. That's me as a DM. That's how I am as okay. a DM. Hexalien, mm-hmm. he's got a bit of a heart of gold. He's trying, okay? He's just, <laughs> he's stupid. Wow. So, you know, you might still get a spell thrown your G- way. G- but. G- Gideon is very weak 
uh, very passive and is on the run from uh, a noble who uh, wants his head. So he's hanging out with you guys because you guys are all big and he is uh, very much shorter. Uh, <laughs> oh, Gideon's in for a really bad time. <laughs> I originally was going to make him a gnome, and I decided no. <laughs> so, but you, uh, you can see, you see, when 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 people can't get into wrestling uh, these days on a regular basis, they get your creativity out. This is where we are redirecting things. <laughs> so I can, I can see that. So looking forward to that. If anyone, if anyone throws your character a sock, are they automatically free from any kind of traps? Well, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not an elf. I'm a human. I. I'm not. Who's squeaking? <laughs> okay. Tatiana was just squeaking there. Yeah, I, I was very pleased with that. Did you like, want to... Oh, good. You guys just gave did, me did... an idea for. I'm going to make a thing now. Like, I'm going to try to create an option. Well, I will I will close this by showing off the my instrument, which is I could not get a liar in time. So instead, I got a troll world tour <laughs> ukulele. I love it. With uh, yeah. plastic strings. And I, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but it is woefully yep. unable to play good music. Oh, yeah, we can hear it. Oh, yeah. And uh, on brand with the Trolls movies. <laughs> but this is this is my liar for until I get a real liar. Um, and a little known fact is I can actually, uh, my first instrument was guitar. And uh, I've always wanted to learn the ukulele, but I ain't going to learn it on this thing. So, <laughs> uh, so may as well use it as a tool. So table, uh, top rope tabletop is going to be 7 p.m. Eastern time this Friday, July 17th is going to be the first uh, iteration of this. It'll be live on the Indie Wrestling US Facebook, uh, Twitch, uh, and and uh, 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 probably the Periscope and all that kind of stuff too. So you can drop in on that. Um, so really looking forward to that. I think it's a good crew. And like I say, and stay tuned on the Indie Wrestling US social media. Like you're going to see those previews, those character previews over the next several days leading up to this. Um, it's going to be very very exciting. You can always already. Uh, check out Gideon the Bard as of this episode going up. I think I think I think one of those another one's going to drop by the morning. Uh, so <laughs> when I like got all these in hand, so uh, go check that out. And uh, and it's something that we wanted to do. I've actually been talking to Keith for a while about doing board game nights and and game nights like this here in the studio. And obviously with everything going on, that that's just not going to happen. So uh, really really glad that you guys came together to to do something like this. And um, and I'm not going to play. I'm just going to sit back and. Make sure the stream goes and just be entertained with the rest of you. So, uh, the, the, the cool thing about this is this was literally like we were on a message on Facebook saying, "Hey, does anyone want to do this?" We all chimed in and said, "Yeah, sure." And within 24 hours, we had a plan down. I think it was like, <laughs> was it was it was it Justin's post, Justin Idol's post it was about Justin doing Idol's it? Post. He and was it, he was very interested in the concept. He was like, "I only yeah. know cyberpunk, but I'd I'd love to try this out." Yeah, and. All, all the regular people who've played D and D in the past were like, "Yeah, me too, me well, too, and, me and, too." Me and too. I think I brought in Keith and said, "Hey, Keith has been talking about doing. We've been talking about doing something. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the thing." So, there you go. All right, guys, thank you so uh, thank you so much. Go check that out, of course, and of course, I want to give a shout out to our friends. Didn't get to visit them this week because we're kind of keeping our distance at the moment. But uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper pepperoni pizza, our friends at Slice on Broadway in Beachview, Carnegie East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, go check them out if you're in town. I know you're probably doing so much traveling right now, but if you find yourself in Pittsburgh or if you're in Pittsburgh, go check them out and, and, and support them because they do support the show and support the Wrestling Mayhem Show and our fine podcast here at Sogatron Media for nearly 10 years at this point, to be honest. So um, thank you so much to Slice on Broadway for supporting us. And please support them back, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, we are going to be right back. I'm going to drop that commercial in there. You're going to hear Keith talking about the concept as well. And uh, we'll be right back with the big question. This is the Bearcat Key Pot here, and uh, I have a very special announcement. Friday, the 17th at 7 p.m., we will be live streaming something special on IndieWrestling.us. It will be myself, Tatiana Rose, Brohemoth, Justin Idol, 
Tony Kincaid, live streaming some virtual Dungeons and Dragons. I will be the illustrious DM. They'll be my most wonderful players. We'll have some laughs and have, just have a good time, you know? Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, let's see how this, let's like a little preview. Let's see how this is gonna go. Mm. Ooh, 13, unlucky number. Hopefully I'll roll this poorly for the players then, for their sakes. I'll see you guys soon. We are back. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Still here with Mad Mike, Tatiana Rose, and Tony Kincaid. Uh, I also pause because I also like, I keep seeing Tony's like other Facebook name in my head, and I'm like, not that one, the other one. <laughs> and now I have his character. I have his Gideon character. So wait, wait for that to start getting confused. The man of many names, not to mention the fourth name I have, which is Billy Kool Aid. Yes, yes, and then the, and then the fifth name that we can't say on the air. Timmy. Uh, <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> not that one. And you no, know no. it's oh, the sixth one. The sixth you one. know it's that if we can't say. It I mean, I, and I, I guess also mention uh, you've been part of the RWA uh, 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 sixty-four band interactive. Who is like. Somebody is like writing on something or something out there, uh, but uh, it's so. Uh, but uh, the uh, the uh, 60, the the recap shows for the uh, bracket out there. Uh, Tony, of course, is a big part of that, and that's where you can really see him piss people off. Uh, so go check that out over at hard to particularly Michael Doc Doherty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> He's the easiest target exactly ever. Yes, um, um, targeting people and um, um, interesting wardrobe choices. We'll just put it at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it is time for the big question, and 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 I warned I warned you guys off air. Like I have my answer, and I'm just trying to figure out how to work into the show. But I, it kind of brought up a thought to me: What is the wildest end to a match that you have seen that sticks in your brain? Ooh. The wildest end to a match. The most interesting, unique, crazy, not typical end to a match that you've seen. Like, how did somebody get the win that sticks out? Do you want me to go with mine first to give you context? Yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm very excited. Because sure. New Japan, okay, New Japan is com- definitely bringing me, giving me that wrestling joy bug again after watching Raw. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm watching this match between uh, Yano and uh, Takahashi, and there's this whole thing where apparently back in the day Yano used to terrorize Takahashi when he was a young lion, and he even like shaved his head and embarrassed him. So I I I'm, I I got through like three ep- three editions of the New Japan Cup today, right? And there's an eight man tag where Yano is uh, introduces like like a scissors. That he's gonna cut his hair again, and he starts freaking out. Like he looks like he's seen a ghost. Looks like he's like coming out and like Undertaker's in the ring waiting for him when he comes out. Like he's that scared of this. So we get to the first episode of the round two matches, and they have their match. Oh, by the way, in the 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 end of the the end of the uh, eight man was um, Takahashi's feet got tied together, and they ended up I don't know somewhere else in the building, and everybody got counted out at the end. Twenty count, mind you, in in New Japan. Um, and there's a whole sequence where they're like carrying him out and they're like, why don't they just take the tape off of his boots? But anyways, other than that, so they have their match. And at some point, first of all, Yano keeps finding scissors everywhere in the arena and it gets, you know, keeps getting taken care, taken away from them. They get athletic tape again. Um, Takahashi gets three man leg race. Um, tied to a young lion, like his foot is tied to the foot of the young lion. So if he goes anywhere, he's bringing the young lion guy with him. Um, I think this is something that happened to Moxley not too long ago. They end up athletic taping um, Yano's hands and around his head and shove him into an elevator and send him down to the first floor. And then (laughs) three man, three legged, two man raced to the ring to barely, barely beat the... I think they legitimately had trouble getting in the ring together, uh, the 20 count, to win the match in the tournament, and we even cue back to the elevator, the show that is on the first floor. 
Wow. It is the most delightful That's thing awesome. I've watched in wrestling in a while. <laughs> so it's, it's, you never go full DDT in the new Japan ring. <laughs> What's that? You never go full DDT in the new Japan ring. The the, the company, uh, the Japanese company DDT. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, they, they do a lot of comedy matches. So. Yeah, and and you know Yano's always fun. He's tearing, you know, he's tearing the the, the pads off of the the corners at, like every match for some reason. And uh, and for some reason he still wants to uh, sell everybody a DVD or something. I don't get that either. But I guess he has a YouTube show, but I'm not going to be able to understand it. Uh, but <laughs> so so that's my answer because is it's just one of the wildest things. I and I, I was sitting here rolling uh, 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 watching it earlier today. So. That's my answer. What, what 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 was your wildest end to a match that you you think you've seen? Um. Well, I I have mine. If you guys are still thinking, yeah, I'm still thinking. Please go. Okay. So, Sorg, when you asked this question, I, the first thing that immediately came to my mind was it had to be something from Lucha Underground. Oh yeah, it had to be. Yeah, and the first thing I thought of, um. And I want I want to remember like I want to, okay. Sorg, do you remember the Hell of War match? <laughs> <laughs> so, Explain what a Hell of War match is. <laughs> oh, brother. Um. So, so first of all, this is part of Ultima Lucha Trace back in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um. This this main event the first part of four parts of Ultima Lucha. Um, it was the three stages of hell match. The first match was first blood. That was the first match. The first match. The first match was first blood. Which means the rest of it, somebody is bleeding beyond this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the second match was no DQ. And the third match was a medical evac match. Basically, an ambulance match, mm-hmm. and I just remember the finish. I remember Dante Fox falling through many panes of glass mm-hmm. from a high distance, and then Killshot like getting down to the ground and literally carrying him into the evac van, like the fucking episode of Mash that it was, and it was it was fan fucking tastic like they beat the shit out of each other for a half hour like if, if you want to watch it if you don't know what i'm talking about but this sounds like it's up your alley because it's got isaiah swerve scott in it and he's fantastic when there's not weapons involved mm-hmm. imagine when he gets to use glass and shit um ultima lucha trace is on the Tubi app because all of Lucha Underground is on there for free. T-U-B-I. T-U-B-I dot TV. It is absolutely free. You can watch all of Lucha Underground. You can skip to any episode you want. Hell of War match. Hell of a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, they should have had you do the commercial on that one. Yeah, well, I think they might have, actually. Oh, okay. I, I was on El Rey Network plugging lucha underground at one. oh that's right because he had like the submitted videos thing right yeah they i never got to see that thing and i definitely got on there nice nice and, yeah and this, this this ultimate lucha let me just if you guys are still thinking i'll run down the rest of this card so you hear what kind of craziness was on it um dr wagner jr and famous b against tejano the mac um won a battle royal for a unique opportunity if we all love those there was phoenix versus mario the moth mass versus hair Sexy Star versus Taya, last Luchador is standing. Oh um, God, Sexy Star! Yeah, I know. Not not great. Yeah, let's not talk about Sexy Star. But a, but a great match. A great match. Um, <sighs> Pentagon <sighs> Dark versus Son of Havoc in a ladder match. Um, Matanza versus El Dragon II in a steel cage. Mil Muertes versus Cage versus Jeremiah Crane for the mystical gauntlet of the gods. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucha Underground was an experience. Oh, oh it was wild. I miss it. It was I miss wild. It. versus Johnny Mundo, title versus career. And then Pentagon Dark cashed in and beat Prince Puma for the Lucha Underground Championship. It's a good card. 
Yeah, a, I mean, <laughs> minus minus the racist. Yeah, yeah, my, minus that. Minus <laughs> that. You know, but yeah. honestly, even if you like, if you don't watch any episodes of Lucha Underground besides the Ultima Luchas, mm-hmm. you'll just enjoy that show in mm-hmm. general. They're solid all the way through. Oh yeah, I think I think one of the best scenes from it though is when uh, Prince Puma and I think it's Rey Mysterio are standing on the roof talking and just worldwide underground walks underneath Rey Mysterio walks away and PJ Black just stops sees Prince Puma <laughs> puts him on <laughs> and the camera pans back to Prince Puma and he's so upset he's just like <laughs> well keep keep in mind in Lucha Underground there was time travel yes yes yes, yes. Was legitimate time travel <laughs> yes and yes. Rey Mysterio is still in that cage hey that that's why he's so anxious to take out it, it, someone's eye. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, now, is this shit. the best or the goofiest or the worst? Are you uh, asking? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the w- weirdest, Cause, cause, wildest, different end to a match. Because uh, the WWE has had a bunch of awful finishes in the last decade that mm-hmm. I can think of. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And like bunch of them are rolling through my head right now like dean ambrose with the exploding television monitor <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, the, and the hologram child the hologram child john stewart that one oh. john stewart mm-hmm. that's a good one that one was solid um god uh you know batiste again his legs uh taped to the during the okay. last man standing match i defend that one i thought it was I, yeah i figured you would <laughs> I didn't like that. A, I didn't like that a face did it. I did Fair. not like that John Cena did it. Fair, okay. I accept that. Uh, children choir mm-hmm. during oh. the cage match. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That that one's always solid. Um, in his hands. Uh, um, I think. I, I no think finish for a Hell in a Cell match. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I think I'm going to go with any time there was an Ultimate X match in TNA and the title fell and they had to put it back up. <laughs> For every Ultimate X finish <laughs> ever. Yeah, almost right. <laughs> oh, um, or 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 uh, WCW did one where the no, it was TNA again where the contract fell off and they had to argue that you had to get the clipboard, not the contract. <laughs> Do you remember the, the WCW match where there were boxes above the ring? One was a pinata, the other one was the world championship, and the world championship falls out of the box. Mm-hmm. There's been some bad, some, some bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, my favorite Set finish props properly. My favorite finish of all time is still Sheldon Benjamin E and the Sweet Chin music. That'll always be my favorite. Mm. When we're talking, to, when we're talking about goofiest, I mean, I could give you ten that I'm just like, this is hilarious. Um, pro- probably, uh, God, yeah, one of those, one of the ones I listed. <laughs> one of those. Uh, any left for you, Tatiana? Ah, uh, yes. Once Mike brought up Lucha Underground, I actually thought of one. And it's from season one. It was uh, the first ever trios titles match. And it was in Helico, uh, Ivelisse, mm-hmm. and, Ivelisse and Son of, Son of Havoc. Havoc versus just... Uh, the, uh, what, it was whatever the, the heck is the crew. It was the crew, right? Yeah, it was yeah, it was against the crew. Well, it was against it was against two teams. That was that's why it's the why that's why it's my pick because uh they they have this great long battle with the crew and they win. Ivelis is like nursing her ankle injury, which we later found out was a break, which holy crap, props. I don't I think that spot of Angelico jumping off the balcony into the ring, I think that happened during the first match. Okay. Or it was, it was attempted. I'm reading who it was. Um, at first they they defeated Big Rick, Killshot, and the Mac, and Cage, King Cuerno, and Tejano. Mm-hmm. Won that match, and then Dario Cueto brought out the crew of Bale, Cortez, and Mister Cisco. Right, that's why it's my pick because yeah. they won. The crowd's into it, and then Dario Cueto walks in and he goes, "Hey, congratulations! Did you know that there was a third team you have to beat?" And you just see all three of them go, "No, no, no, oh no!" 
crew comes out and it was just it was really good storytelling too yeah. Because it was like these three have been arguing the whole season. They've been at each other's throats, and now they have to be forced together, and they just completely destroy the odds. And just watching Dario Cueto sell that moment of, oh crap, <laughs> was beautiful. How is how has that man not gotten a, another wrestling job? I don't know. Like he might he might be the time, of, in the time of quarantine in WWE, he would be perfect. Yeah. He would be perfect. Like, oh, God. Because every promotion is Lucha Underground now because they can't go anywhere. <laughs> but I, I will make an honorable mention one just because this was going to be my pick. Uh, Baron Corbin's first loss on SmackDown, I think it was to Dolph Ziggler, where it was a ref botch, or at least it was sold as a ref botch. He was, like, putting an ankle lock, and he was, like, clawing and trying to get away and was, like, sort of tossing himself up the air on the mat and the ref goes ring the bell he tapped out and everybody went no no he didn't <laughs> but they didn't overturn it and it was they just remember sitting there going wow <laughs> <laughs> There, oh, there's a okay. there's a couple finishes in Wrestling Society X that I want to bring up that I, I just <laughs> remember in my you head. You mean like <laughs> Piranhas? Yes, which that involved was the one. Vampiro and the future uh, future uh, Mil Mertes. Yes. <laughs> Plus an exploding cage match. Oh. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> So, yes, I, I think I'm just going to throw all of those into a jambalaya pot, and uh, that's my favorite. Awesome. Awesome. Pir- pir- piranhas. <laughs> Splitting cages. I mean, the piranha match really just kind of like was, was Wrestling Society X in a nutshell right there. Okay, so, so. Um, what was Tables, Ladders, and Cervezas? <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> what? I've, only, I've only A good seen- time is what it is. <laughs> I've only seen drips and drabs of WSX, but I'm just looking at their Wikipedia, and apparently one of the main events was Tables, Liars, and Cervezas. Yo, it's only like six episodes. Go find and just take it Sorg, in. Sorg, it is ten episodes. It's ten they, episodes? They made, was it? They only Jeez. aired nine. Get the DVD. Yeah. Oh. The DVD set is right, very uh, much worth it. Let's see. Amazon.com. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Looking for it. There I, it is. I may, I may just there be buying it. There it is. Right 1897. 1897. Oh. Honestly, there's three left in stock. We should both buy it. <laughs> I, I shouldn't, man. I, <laughs> oh, there's one in my cart right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to take out that $300 thing I had studied for later, and this is what happens when the producer goes to the other side of the country uh, um, during the show. Gentlemen, you, you need to learn some self-control mm. and, how to, and how to monitor a wish list. Mm. Mm. If that is a thing. But there's it's only weird. three copies really left. left house they're not... April, so. Do you think they're making more copies of the Wrestling Society X DVD set? I don't know. They, they, they probably are not. I do they not think MTV not. is still making money off of this. Sorg, I just bought it. Mm, let's see if I still can. <laughs> Somebody else out there might be too. Oh, no. Don't send it to California. What the Order hell? Order has been placed. Jesus, Andrews. Oh, oh, I'm going to regret uh, this in so many ways. Why am I the way? Save gift I'm, options. I'm excited for that, Sorg. Tina, Tina just said in chat the time bomb match from Wrestling Society. Wrestling Society ass, X was ass in the best way humanly possible. I'm, I'm already, oh my god! I'm already sold on it. Like, like because I'm yep. looking at who's in this. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, this looks great. Uh, I'll be here Friday. Hey, and any <laughs> wrestling promotion that has good Charlotte as a part of it. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Oh up. my god! You know, every time, so so I, I you know, every time that I, I I I have been the biggest plug to try to get uh, Nick Farah as the ring announcer for something like Fight Underground because of my member berries of Wrestling Society X <laughs> and how um, they did comment, how they did ring announcing in there because it was just a guy that kind of resembled Matt Pinfield yelling in a raspy <laughs> voice. 
<laughs> and I'm like, this is what this needs to feel like. So, uh, so that yeah, that was yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, coming coming soon to at Mad Mike four eight eight three on Twitter. <sighs> Live tweets of Wrestling Society X episode. Uh, Mike, listen, we, Mike, we might have to sync that up this weekend and uh, both oh, do that. Oh, so. I, I, listen, I'll, if you guys want to do it, I'll I'll break out my DVDs and we can just do a live watch. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You with, know what's with, funny? With, I didn't even other... check and see if it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it probably is. Wrestling Society X complete series. Motherfucker. Ah, we can cancel oh. those. Oh. Oh well, it's fine. You know what? It belongs in our collection. Let's be honest. Well, I don't know. If, I don't, honest to goodness, I don't know if the tenth episode is on YouTube because the tenth episode was never aired. <laughs> Tina dropped the dropped it in the chat room. <laughs> Tina dropped the YouTube in the chat room. So, yeah. Um. Anyways, well. God it, bless you, Tina. God as we, bless you. As we continue to make bad decisions live on the internet, uh, <laughs> it's time. Oh. How Bad financial decisions only... on the Wrestling Mayhem show. How are all of these only 20-minute clips? I think that's the episodes. I think they're only half-hour shows. I can this out a night. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a, <laughs> hey, it's a four to set. It's, it's going to be... It's an afternoon, man. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yeah. Sword, sword. We're just, we're just going to do a live watch Apparently of this. we are. Apparently we are. Um, It is time for our assignment. Uh, we were assigned by oh, Professor wow. Jacob Edwins live on the show last week. You know what? Before we get to that, before we get to that, so Stork, he's here, right? I can talk. No, to he's him? not here. He's oh, not no, here. No, Stork, Stork, he's here, right? No, he's not here. He submitted what? a video. He's not here on the line. Oh, There's he no... submitted a video. I, you know, he, he's fucking scared of Mad Mike. He's scared of Mad Mike. He's scared. Okay. He, he's scared of me. Hmm. Um, he knew I wasn't going to be on last week so of mm-hmm. course that's when he shows up to be a quote-unquote professor i still haven't seen a degree motherfucker like i need to see a goddamn degree for you to call yourself professor of anything um and sort do you know how i know he's scared hmm. i watched the entire episode with him last week i'm the only name that he made sure he said correctly so he disrespected you as a host he disrespected my good friend Riz. He disrespected everyone. He disrespected Matt. He's not a professor. He's a professor of trash. That's what he's a professor of. Wow. Wow. Am I, gonna have, am I, am I, am I actually going to have to defend Professor Jacob Edwin we'll go. on this yeah. podcast? Yeah. I mean, you, right you, 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 you've seen. You just watch I, a I know, I, Triple H match for fun. Yeah. Triple H is one of the greatest wrestlers of the 21st century, and you should be privileged to have to watch a 30-minute Triple H match, no, Mike. because I've seen a lot of those matches, and they're all the same. Man. It's all about this, the same just, and how you just, play this, it. This is, this is all... Mike, you remind me of another Mike I know uh, <laughs> named Michael Doherty. And okay. I would... I would mention this because you both are complete bumbling idiots, obviously. When Professor Jacob Edwin gives you an assignment, you do it, and you thank him for making you more intelligent. And I thank him for having me watch this match that we're about to talk about. I there don't was think I drew any this. more intelligence from this match. There was nothing wrong with this match. There was nothing wrong with this match at all. I, I, was, I was here live. I was there live for this match. But they haven't all been winners. You came on a good week. <laughs> it was. This is the, it was the longest but most satisfying. Well, the assignment for this week was the Royal Rumble of 2008. The Royal Rumble match of 2008. This was in Madison Square Garden. As we saw, uh, Mike and myself and several members of the of the Mayhem uh, 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 hosting committee. Sure, that's what it's called now. Uh, we're in attendance for this. This is the uh, this is the time where we got a couple hundred people to chant Edge for uh, Chad, and and actually people thought he was Edge for a minute. Uh, yeah, so they, there is still a small Japanese family that thinks they took a picture with Edge outside of Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a thing that happened, and it, they seemed pretty excited to be there. Um, oh, but, so do yeah. we still have the video? It's somewhere. <laughs> we look for it every time. But anyway, so this happened. Um, this was uh, 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 Riz sent a whole book. I don't even know how to parse this thing for the okay, show. Uh, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, uh, Mike, I if found you found the uh, video, okay, I'm going to post it in the chat room so you can bring it up. There you so go. We'll we'll. we'll... <laughs> 
Am I, am I bringing it up live on the show? Is that what's happening right now? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, feel like, I feel like we need to... For context yeah. of this. Yeah, um, because because Chad, um, he kind of fashioned his whole look after Edge. Uh-huh. He was wearing a knit cap and he had the long hair and he was doing spear motions to everyone in the crowd that would, you know asked to be speared the best part was when we were up in the crowd for uh, armageddon here in pittsburgh and that's when the edgeheads um debuted and they, there was already commentary to him it was like wow man edges in the in the in the uh thing and then like the fake edges came out and they looked at him and said why aren't you down there so <laughs> uh so that that was a thing that happened but um no, it, it's. Uh, I'm trying to pull this video up here. Oh God, it's here. It's it's, it's eleven seconds. It's ele- 11. It is eleven seconds. But uh, uh, just to give you a, a little bit of an idea here, I got a little bit of crosstalk, but you could hear them chanting it over there in the background. So I don't know how the crowd. Like I never took a shot of the crowd. I really sucked at this back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can hear the crowd though. Yeah, you can that's hear not, the crowd. That's not just us. No, no. That's just like. The way Madison Square Garden empties, yeah, like it's basically a file. Like everyone files out into two separate columns afterwards, and like we just stood in the middle where everyone's dispersing and create a hole where Chad is just watching, like he's doing spear motions and like throwing up the horns and everything. It was great. It was fantastic. It was a good time. So there, there, there it is for you. <laughs> so. And then I think the I think the family came up. We we got we got him up on our shoulders and everything. It was it was a spectacle. But anyways, it's not what this is about. So this no. was a Royal Rumble match, and this was a very Royal Rumbley match to me. Like it it had everything I wanted from a Royal Rumble match. It had people mixing it up. It had it had a ring filling with people. They had a lot of big guys in this. Like like a guy it, who wasn't truly eliminated. You had a guy that wasn't truly like a skeptical. Warren Swoggle deserves his title shot. He does. Uh, so does Finley. Hmm. You what? cannot be disqualified from a rumble. That was bullshit. I, true. Sorry. This is true. That is awful. Mm-hmm. I remember Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie Lamb bouncing each other with steel chairs. Mm-hmm. You cannot be disqualified in a rumble match. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't they? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ECW guys that are around the hardcore championship side that would they bring chairs and stuff into the ring, right? So I well, mean, that, that's their gimmick. It's ECW, so clearly all ECW ever did was beat each other with chairs. True, mm-hmm. true. That's um, not true. There was Lucha too, <laughs> <laughs> and they also beat each other with chairs. <laughs> okay, they're more Fine. inventive with the chairness, right? So, um, but uh, no, it, 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 there was a lot of good points in this, and I remember the John Cena uh, coming out. Uh, so a few points, a few points from this that I, I probably never noticed back then. There was there was a few kind of like holy, you know, like little detail moments of things, you know, that kind of go sideways. Did Hardcore Holly just straight stomp uh, Shawn Michaels in the face <laughs> when mm-hmm. he came in? Because <laughs> I. I- he did. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. Sean gets the bloody nose. Third guy in, and he's like, "I'm just going to kick Sean Michaels in the head a few times." And uh, like, how do you like me now? Yeah, yeah. That seems in. There was a scary moment where um, CM Punk came in, House of Fire got uh, uh, uh got got the chokehold, uh, extended chokehold from Taker, kind of fought it off, went to Bulldog, I think, uh, Sean Michaels, and just got jacked in the face. <laughs> I take her. Um, and, and, and Riz points out another instance where apparently something similar happened to Cody Rhodes during this match. I can see that. Like it wasn't it wasn't the cleanest match I noticed. Um well, it's Royal Rumble. When are they ever? Right. I, I'm not mean clean like um like it makes complete sense. I mean clean like uh, the, people were getting hit like potato patch fries a lot Mm -hmm. and it was it was not the cleanest thing in the world again this is this is the era where greg cully was walking around and being in royal rumble so i don't expect five stars this is this is there was a lot of beef in the ring snitsky's in this there was there was some steak frites going on in this rumble i uh i took notes during this entire rumble oh good and they they they're not they're funny Okay, really go for funny. it. Go for it. What, what, what stuck out for you? Okay, so uh, there's Jomo entering like an awkward video game character. Uh, when 
John Morrison makes his entrance. The camera is like sort of cent center of the ring. So in uh, the right corner is the action. And in the left corner, you just see the doors go. And there's Jomo. And he does his entrance in the left corner of the screen. And I, I immediately thought, ah, WWE 19. <laughs> I, I immediately thought video game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no one distracts like Swoggle. When Swoggle came out, literally all of the action in the ring stopped for a second so that everybody could look and sell the fact that, oh my god, Hornswoggle's actually in this match. What the hell? By the way, Hornswoggle Sean McMahon at the, at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Uh, well, it's officially a McMahon at this moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, earlier in the pay-per-view, there's a promo where um, Vince is backstage convincing Hornswoggle that he can win and that he has to win because he's a McMahon. Mm. Oh, that's and awful. And he's even playing out how Vince won a Royal Rumble back in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ms. Morrison and Cody step into a ring together. Less tan, less muscles, and way less money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. I'm going to mute my mic because I'm just going to laugh the entire time. <laughs> Okay, the next couple of ones are just like straight up just mind dumping. Uh, oh, look, it's Jimmy Snooker. Uncomfortable. Cringe. <laughs> Roddy, Pi Roddy Piper. Less racism this time, thank God. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. hey. yeah. Carlito is vastly underrated. I stick by that. He could have been a very great character and work wrestler in the wwe but they had him so regulated to being a funny character that uh it just it never worked the apple despite... game killed him oh yeah despite the it, fact it... that that was his trademark that was like his thing mm -hmm. uh i don't know why i wrote this one mick foley is here and i heard jack pollock sign exasperation somewhere <laughs> 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 i think I think I just I think I just uh, saw somebody uh, share the video of him getting socked. Was before I went and watched the video. I think that's why I wrote that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just remember, there was a popular wrestler named Mr. Kennedy who later became popular as Mr. Anderson. I think I just don't like those names. And In you, also, you also have to repeat the last names too. Kennedy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Cody Rhodes did this really cool rope thing where uh, there's this guy in KFWA who every time he gets tossed over the ropes, he catches himself and he lifts himself back up. Cody went to do that twice and then Kennedy tried to grab him and Cody, Cody ended up hooking his legs around Kennedy's head and tossing him over. I thought that was awesome. You're talking about the skin the cat move? Yes. Yeah, okay. And the last one that I'm going to read off of this very, very long list, why did I make it so long, is good thing that Miz tucked his chin on that, ha on that hard elimination because it definitely would have buckled his face and neck. Horn like Miz is like dangling upside down on the ropes, Hornswoggle, and it's like balancing by his one hand. Hornswoggle comes and sweeps the hand. Mm. Mm. And Miz basically tucked himself so hard that he like bounced back first off the ring apron before hitting the floor which is good because if he had just gone straight down he would have gone <laughs> head first um some notes from riz and he had a lot of them um this is like some of my my thoughts as well um, this is the only time post WCW days that Michael Buffer appeared on WWE television. And honestly, in 2008, that man could read the yellow pages and make it sound somewhat entertaining. I was, and also you could tell that he didn't really like he, Michael Buffer was throwing the inflection kind of in, in places I wasn't used to. <laughs> so like that was kind of throwing me off a little bit. Um, I, I'm sure I didn't notice it live, but, uh, let's see, uh, Undertaker starting. This was a huge surprise, especially, Having number thirty the last the year before, um, there was a thing about Great Collie in here somewhere. Oh, here it is because it's Riz. Also, have I mentioned how Great Collie and Taker actually make uh, this type of battle uh, pretty epic? It didn't last long, but notice uh, HPK wasn't anywhere near the altercation until uh, Kali got in, in, eliminated. Kali and Taker uh, worked tremendously together, and Kali did not deserve that "you can't wrestle" chant, especially if you looked up uh, his pre WWE days. Um, but also remember, this is New York. Um, so, 
I mean, I had and, a, and, and Riz is telling us we were probably chanting the exact same thing. True. Um, <laughs> um, also, like Mike had to explain to me why they were booing Rey Mysterio in New York City. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I get it now. Uh, let's see, yeah. there's there's a, you mentioned the Cody Rhodes thing. There's a there's a Facebook that usually pops up on his feed on Facebook that accurately describes the moment when Cody Rhodes come, came out. As soon as he attacks Taker. You can see that he is he was legit scared. As soon as he hit that drop kick, you can see that he was completely shocked about the Undertaker, who started at number one, who had just recently as CM Punk had C- CM Punk do the same thing to him, only to take take Punk's head clean off his shoulders. The thing I was mentioning before, I tell him to kick and drop kick him. Uh, he also lasted extremely long. He didn't do much. He didn't do much because Cody got eliminated. Remember Cody Rhodes was, I remember Cody Rhodes was in the match. Um, he was teaming with Hardcore Holly as a tag champ at the time. I think mm-hmm. they mentioned. That's yeah. Um, that's that a weird yeah. pairing. It, it was because um, Hardcore Holly was look um, was looking for someone to be his tag team partner, and Cody had just started. And in fact, they when they lost the tag titles, it was because Ted DiBiase Jr. had a mystery partner. That ended up being Cody Rhodes. I remember that story, and that was that was the beginning of the dynasty, right? Uh, legacy, legacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, dynasty is uh, a soap opera from the eighties. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could probably pinpoint the moment in Ted DiBiase Jr.'s career where there was no coming back ever, and it was definitely the segment where he had a rap battle against our with with Maurice versus our truth Neith Torres. And he sang God awfully, and Maurice just, bless her heart, just tried to dance along, and it didn't. Uh, yeah. That should have been the end of her career, too, but luckily, luckily she was able to come back from that. But Tendi Biasi, yeah, it was not a good time. Well, not a good time. I, 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 watching this match, the one thing, and sorry to take it down a little bit, was how many wrestlers are no longer with us. Really yeah. bummed me out. I, I, yeah. used that, I used to play that game a lot before I got really depressed. Okay. Like every, every entrant that would come out, I would either say WWE, TNA, or dead. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. that's not. Mm-hmm. It's usually that, the, two, the three uh, categories they'd fall. And just it, well, the reason I bring this up is is just you know I'm playing I'm playing it again in the background, and just like enjoying Umaga in general, mm-hmm. and just Umaga is just so mm-hmm. oh, Umaga good. Would, Oh, and you know what? Speaking of great finishes, his I Quit match with Cena. Yes. My God. Yes. Ooh. My God. Which one was, was which was, was was that finish? Cena removed the whole middle turnbuckle, and that's how he put him in the SDF. He put him in the SDF mm, and choked yeah. him out with the middle rope, and, and oh. he didn't tap. He passed out. Yeah. And he just My looked God. like a massive monster. Um, Big Daddy V's in here. Roddy Piper, obviously. Um, you know, just. And then, and then, it just that just so that sucks. But we're we're completely skipping over the ending too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to touch some other points start, before we get to that. Uh, but so for, for real quick before because I lose Riz's thing because he's got a lot in here. Um, like a taker randomly taking out his frustration on HBK elimination on Snitsky was pretty yeah. random and pretty representative of how fans in 2008 thought about Snitsky. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, yeah. Chavo was oh, ECW I, champion. I was just about to say that. Like, Chavo was the first world champion to be in a Royal Rumble. Ooh. Because mm. that, that hadn't happened before. Mm-hmm. There was a Rumble match for the world title. Well, was do, was, but... was the ECW World Championship at this time a world champion? They alluded <laughs> to the idea that Tommy Dreamer would pick the ECW Championship if he won. So if Chavo, but but then you're kind of like half-assing yourself because if Chavo wins, he's like, well, I'm going to choose Big Goldie because I'm not a yeah. win. Uh, and then you say you're going to be a two. Chavo said that, one, that when he won the Rumble, he would just take the night off. Oh yeah! Oh, did he? Oh, I, that's right. I believe that because he won it literally the ECW before this event. Mm. Okay, he won it on the go home, and I'm pretty sure he said that. Hey, if I win the Rumble, I'm just taking the night off. There was a, there was a point in here where they talked about people qualifying on Saturday night. What the hell happened on Saturday night? Um, was there a main event or something? Let's see. Was it a velo- was Velocity still around at the ah, time? That's but but the, that Mick Foley and Hornswoggle would win their chance. On velocity, I think, I think they, I think they um, competed in matches on house shows. 
Royal Rumble qualifiers. On really? Hellcats. That's interesting. Yeah, because I'm looking on the, the Wikipedia. Uh, John Morrison and The Miz defeated Jimmy Wang Yang and Shannon Moore to qualify for the Rumble on a house show. Huh. Hardcore Holly qualified by being Trevor Murdoch on a house show. Cody Rhodes beat William Regal on a Raw house show to qualify. Huh. Oh. Uh, Carlito and Santino defeated D.H. Smith and Super Crazy to qualify in a house Whoa. show. Whoa. So uh, D.H. D. H. Smith completely underutilized in WWE. Mm. Thank God. New Japan knew what to do with him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're like, hey, you're just going to be your dad. Cool? Cool. 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 <laughs> and uh, CM Punk qualified at WWE Super Show. Jeez. On the 26th. So, by being Chavo. But Chavo ended up in the match anyway. Yeah. This is 2008 CM Punk where he was like on the cusp of like still being a jack. Yes. <laughs> but not and, cool enough for it yet. And I recall, like, I, I feel like watching back, if, if you weren't in the time, like, it just said, oh, yeah, there's another John Cena comeback. But at the time, like, I remember on the, what, what did we take, a bus ride up there or whatever we did to go up there? Oh, I think it was a car, actually. I mean, there were, like, there were reports about Cena saying that he may miss WrestleMania. Yep. In interviews and, and things. So he was, like, selling that idea. So it was a true it surprise a, for him to come out at this point. It's probably the last true surprise, I think, in wrestling history. It feels uh, like it. Well, it feels like it to me. I, Edge Big wrestling back, history. Edge coming back from crazy one. You know what? You're oh, right. Yeah, Edge, Edge, it's, it's, the big, it's the biggest surprise since Edge. And then Edge kind of eclipsed it. But I remember reading an article on one of the forums where uh, like it was, it was old school dirt sheet. And he was like, it's a torn pack. Like, I'm out at least a year. I'm yeah. missing WrestleMania. Like, this is awful. Oh, this sucks because I want to be out there. He gave this interview like a week before. So that motherfucker knew he was coming back <laughs> and cut that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I when he came out at 30, like, my dorm room exploded <laughs> because none of us expected this. And we're we're – don't I, listen wwe if you want the 50 bucks i'll give you the 50 bucks we watched it illegally i'm sorry it was college i was a freshman deal with it um <laughs> and we're watching it in like uh, 180p so it's it's a pixel of john cena and even the pixel of john cena popped me it looked like, like the, it, look, it looked like the n64 entrances uh on wrestlemania no i was watching no mercy's royal rumble match <laughs> Dick and Dick it was Dick awesome Dick Dick the dog. <laughs> it was awesome Apparently, Hardcore Holly qualified for this Rumble match in Poughkeepsie. Yay! But uh, back in I, the hometown, I love, I love that this match started with Taker and Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. who were the last two in the Rumble before this. Mm -hmm. Like that was great. That's, personally, that was just solid. Personally, when those two got eliminated, it got a little hard for me to pay attention to the rest of the match. Mm -hmm. Even despite the fact that I think Triple H had entered the match by that point. Yeah. And um, just had he known, he, he was like, oh, wait, no, he might not have because yeah. he was 29. Yeah, he I think that might that might have been what drew me what drew me back in because that once I got eliminated, I was like, oh, that was that was fun. Looked at my phone and was like, wait, there's still a match going on. Yeah, that was that was a weird way to get to the middle. The, the, the mid card clear out was you clear out Shawn Michaels uh, and take her at the same time. And then you go to the mid card take clear out like mm -hmm. you think it'd be the other way around but i mean this was a very uniquely uh crafted match i mean the final the final three were it was batista hunter and cena mm -hmm. um and just that story is just fun mm -hmm. but you know just again seeing the scene coming out it's the only time cena's ever been cheered in new york um, and I think that's that's a positive. Until he was um, until he wasn't three minutes later. He was cheered at Mania twenty. Maybe, uh, big, maybe big show. Okay, that's uh, that's fair. But still, I mean, like he was he was like they were hyped. Mm -hmm. Like oh, that was God. that was something. Oh yeah, that was a huge pop. And the only reason it's not like like is again because of Edge. Like Edge coming back mm -hmm. kind of you know deflates it a little bit. But you still sit there. 
and, and just watching him just stare down uh, Triple H and Triple H just doing his spit yelling thing. Like you, <laughs> you get that sport, that feeling that you've been sports entertained mm-hmm. and uh, you're happy about it. And it doesn't happen much nowadays. John Cena should be respected as one of the greatest of all time. Absolutely. If not the greatest of all time, definitely the greatest of the modern era and should be in the conversation. Absolutely. 100%. I don't know if Mike left or went to get his John Cena Funko Pop. I think he went to go get something. Uh, I will say I will say one thing. Uh, the whole, I know we were kind of joking about this before, but the whole Hornswoggle not actually being eliminated became a really big concern for me during the match. Uh, I was talking to you guys a little bit about this, so Patreon might have seen it. Uh, but I remember watching the match and then I realized, wait, Hornswoggle was in this match and I don't remember seeing him get eliminated. And I had this horrible moment of, oh no, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't they wouldn't just toss him in the middle of this amazing Triple H John Cena returning confrontation, would they? This is Vince McMahon we're talking about, so would they? And then it didn't happen, and I was so relieved. I mean, I, as much as the concept of Hornswoggle being thrown like Spike Dudley uh, <laughs> kind of cracked me up, uh, I, I, I have met, I've ha- I have met Hornswoggle. He's a very nice person. <laughs> I do not want that for that man. New Yorkers would not have caught that. <laughs> they would They would just clear. <laughs> they would have just been like, hey, look, there's a child coming through. No. So, so I no. also, it would have been yeah. like Daria playing volleyball. Yeah, we we uh, both we both. No, 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 no. Wow. Another another show you should buy the complete series on DVD about. Any, uh, uh, it, it. but don't own it. Don't tempt me. I've already spent too much money on this show uh, <laughs> tonight. <laughs> um, it's all on Hulu anyway. It's oh cool. Uh, now I'm too busy cool. watching Cowboy Bebop and uh, what they do in the shadows over there. Uh, so. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm? Cowboy Bebop's on Hulu. Oh yeah, it's been there. That's, Cowboy that's, Bebop's on Hulu. That's the only reason I haven't bought the Blu-rays. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, Tatiana's doing not sleeping tonight. Cowboy oh Bebop's God. on Cowboy Hulu. Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. Uh, I have to sleep. I have to wake up in four hours, guys. So. Oh, uh, Cowboy Cowboy Bebop's what got me through college, man. That's that was some good shit. But um, anyways. Uh, so with that, so Royal Rumble 2008, let us know your thoughts on the social media. We do have another assignment uh, has been uh, 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 mailed in by the professor. He's back. Uh, oh, so let's guy. get <laughs> to And Mike is so excited for this part. So Chicken let's find out. out. The talk. Let's find out what the next assignment is for next week. Well, boys, it's time for another assignment. This one is January 13th, 2014. Mm. It's an episode of Raw. You'll recognize it almost as soon as it begins. And this is a little bit less for the wrestling match. But in the wrestling match, you're going to see things like uh, a much older version of the Usos versus an also older version of Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper and Daniel Bryan. Oh. It's the Usos versus Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt, the Wyatt family, in a cage match. Mm. I'm not going to spoil the ending or ramble on too much about the match. The match is what it is. You can study a lot of things like, uh, well, it's it's kind of a character study this time. Um, just see what the the crowd pays attention to and see what you'll end up paying attention to. Enjoy. Okay. No, no, spo- no spoilers. I'm not going to spoil this for anyone who hasn't seen this. I don't even have to watch this match. I just can close my eyes yeah. and watch this match. I, I like. I brought it up. I brought it up just to make sure it's the one I'm thinking of. It's exactly the one I'm it's thinking. Exactly of. the one you're thinking of. It's it's the one with, where Daniel Bryan has uh, the least fashionable ring attire, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's saying something because he's not a fashionable male. No, but this is this is one of the greatest uh, moments leading up to what's coming for Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm really trying not to spoil this, but I don't think there's a single person 
in the chat right now or listening to this just know knows what we're talking about. Yeah, but I mean, this, the, the, this is one of the best moments in Raw of the last decade. Mm-hmm. Period. The cover art of the episode of Raw gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It gives up the goat. But actually, eh, goat. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but this might be a good um if you, if you do the homework along with the rest of us this might be a good shot to like if you if you watch wrestling a, like a shot chaser thing watch it right after the swamp match <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't this is definitely going to be a good chaser i don't know if the shot's going to be good but the chase is going to be good <laughs> that's the point the shot's usually oh. terrible. The chaser usually, you know, it's like taking a pickleback shot. It'll be, great. It'll be great. And while we're at it, I just want to throw a shout out for our friends at uh, Put a Pickle on It on Facebook and YouTube <laughs> with our buddy Chachi. Uh, he's got a great show where he puts pickles on things and eats them. Um, so please, please subscribe. So, but had to get that out there. Uh, guys, let's, let's find out. <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh boy! <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, anybody ready? Anybody got one? Yeah, Good. I I learned I learned that wrestling and D and D are the same thing. Just <laughs> one involves dice and one doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of character work. A lot of character yeah. work. I I also I also learned that I I I need to watch more New Japan because. That is a. I, I did watch the end of that match while you were talking. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. I got to watch mm-hmm. more New Japan, man. Also, just watching Ishii just beat the shit out of somebody is always a good time. Really, just just only watch Raw and SmackDown when I have to come on the show, and then watch New Japan when I feel happy. When I want to feel happy. Mm-hmm. I only also watch Raw and SmackDown when I have to come on the show. Unfortunately, I'm here every fucking week. <laughs> Sucks to suck, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I know. I learned that uh, I think wrestling would be a lot better off if there were more secrets with giant reveals Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it was so refreshing to like how like see the payoff of John Cena coming back after everybody basically thinking he's not coming back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want I want more of that. I like it. Mike, what did you learn this week? Oh, man, I, I I learned so much this week. Um, I learned that Fox has migrated the Mass Singer over to the Performance Center. Oh, yeah, I heard um, about that. Smackdown had a karaoke competition. Uh, I was trying to go the entire show without talking about it, and wait, uh, what? Uh, Smackdown had a karaoke. All right, you know what? Uh, mini, mini, big question to close out the show. If you had to compete in a WWE karaoke challenge and could only sing a wrestler's theme song, what wrestler's theme song mm, would you mm, sing? Mm, mm. I walk alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, the, the Nexus theme song. Ooh. Uh, both about walking alone. <laughs> this fire this fire burns. Kill switch. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Um, I would sing the old Randy Orton theme song. Ah. This fire burns by Kill Switch. Oh shit! <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! I forgot the name of it. Okay. No, no, burning my light. But his first theme song was Kill Switch engages. This fire burns. He used it for one week, and then it went to CM Punk. Oh, oh, okay. Because I was gonna say, I'm like, no, it's not this fire. Okay, all right. I forgot he used it for one week. That I mean, burning my light by Mercy Drive. Great Ooh. song. Yeah. Mercy Drive and Alter Bridge are just kings of good songs. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Saliva. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Not, Saliva. Not, for, not, for, not for wrestler entrances, but for themes. See, if you would extend it to like pay-per-view sell yeah. promos, uh, mm-hmm. like they in like 2003, they sold, they, Saliva's always uh, was for the first Elimination Chamber match. And I very much remember I that, that promo that video. And Go, go along with that. Did did anybody watch the the like the the montage at the beginning of the Royal Rumble pay per view when you were doing the homework? No, it's no, I, it's the I, one I, I've watched it before. I yeah, I, so it's the one where they're fighting in a subway. 
<gasps> and yeah. it is I've fantastic. It's fantastic. I mean, it's, only seconded only to the um the uh, West Side Story year where Rey Mysterio tonight. Yes, where Rey Mysterio was wearing a wig on top of his mask for some reason. Uh, yeah, they, 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 I, like those I miss. Those kinds sure, of things I'm I miss. About to sing the whole intro for that. Like you, you oh, got me oh, off. I'm sorry. Me to it quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> like it ends with Kurt Angle singing. When the smoke is clear, I'll be the last man standing. Like it's literally all of them doing a West Side Story number, and it's fan fucking tastic. <laughs> Tina's going with uh, "Broken Dreams" or "I Walk Alone." There you go. Okay. You know what? Uh, second choice would be uh, Christian's theme song. Oh, Ooh. waterproof on there, right? Clo- yeah, close your eyes. I think yeah. was the title of it. it mm-hmm. It's one of the best theme songs in the WWE, and nobody talks about how good it is because nobody cared about Christian as much as they cared about Edge. So it always kind of got background side. So I, pick- I, I posted that West Side Story video in the chat room. Thank you. Can I can I pick my own theme song from Day of Reckoning? Zebrahead falling apart. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> that's a good one. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's, really, that's a really good one. And I forgot the 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 West Side Story they did, like the Jets and the Sharks, was Raw and SmackDown. Yep. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Look, there, oh, the the there he is with the wig. There he is with the wig. These wigs. These oh, wigs. Like, Amazing. I like how they determined. Who the people were that wouldn't have to wear wigs like JBL their hair already looks fake. Yeah. It's just it's fantastic. It's so like you don't get this anymore. I mean I'm, well, I'm sorry. All right. Let's hope that everything with this coronavirus nonsense kind of calms down by the time April comes around. Because WWE I Royal still Rumble want Sunday, us to have WrestleMania goes Hollywood again. Mm-hmm. I want fake trailers for movies. I uh, I know it probably won't happen now because of a whole lot of mitigating circumstances. I still think we could have gotten a Becky Lynch trailer. For well, well, Where it's just Becky Lynch and you, Seth Rollins or Doctor no. Mark. No. 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 Because that was never used in the WWE. Yeah. Screw the WWE. This is still a really good song. Uh, side note, but, but I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna complain about this. There's a song that they used for Chris Jericho. It's a Fozzie song, and I can't remember the title of it. Uh Watch Me Shine. Okay. And they never used it as a theme because they always wanted to use break the walls down yeah mm-hmm. but it is fozzy's best song is watch me shine and it is phenomenal and it's so good and it should have been a chris jericho face theme and screw you for not using that outside of the dvd because that song bangs and uh tati uh, i thought this was the theme for nxt takeover NXT. chicago Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. When Champa turned on Gargano. Yeah. Wow. Was, yeah. I, I had a feeling it was an NXT something or I, other. I know that again, they, they used Fozzie a couple times for pay per views, I know, especially this last run of his. So just, I'll, just sing this, I'll just sing this Rebel Heart over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> this Rebel Heart. Uh, Okay. They're that also a- the re- they're also the reason I like Poppy. Oh, mm-hmm. oh cool. there's always good reason to like Poppy oh, though. Wow. I all right, okay, 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 hold on. One last thing. Poppy just recently did a cover of all the things she said by tattoo. <gasps> I want no Rai versus Psycho Victoria in a street fight with Poppy singing over the whole match. I want Poppy singing EO to the ring. I want Poppy singing Victoria to the ring. I want Poppy singing baby death metal over the whole match like it's a goddamn New Jack match. I've always wanted to do that, like have a match that was set to music. 
Uh, oh, watch, watch any old CW New Jack match. God, where were we? Where they just let the music play and like just didn't turn it off. Like how and they did a half the match with the music playing. Like where the hell KSWA? was it? It might have been. Because <laughs> I went and saw KSWA Millville days last year, and not only did the entrance music I think play a little bit too long, but there was also a band down the street that wouldn't stop playing. <laughs> Oh yeah, but of course they had to perform. So they had to perform, and they got salty about the wrestling happening and having more people. So yeah, I was there for one of those. So uh, I called them out, call them out on Twitter. I'm like, hey, Millville, don't book this band again. <laughs> They're kind of assholes. Uh, so. Oh yeah, because they they were trying to call out the wrestling show during a match. And it's yeah, like, they were. Oh, that's such a bad idea for oh, so yeah. many reasons. Everybody's just like, oh wait, have fun with your ten fans over there. We're gonna watch wrestling. So. Uh, did anybody get everybody get their what they learned out? Did we get through all this? I also you you did my, not. My YouTube really knows me because they just came up with a video for the Iconics bullying people for five minutes and 38 seconds straight. Good. All yeah. right. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Guys, <laughs> on that note, I, I Tony Kincaid, you got some stuff going on online. Of course, both of you are part of the top rope tabletop happening this Friday on IndieWrestling.us social media streams. Uh, what, else, what else you got to plug, Tony? Uh, well, we are doing the next match of the training sessions tomorrow on 2PW, mm-hmm. as well as the quarantine challenge continues Saturday, uh, both on 2PW's Facebook oh, show. Uh, we just released the uh, Sweet 16 results for uh, RWA. Mm-hmm. Did did you put those out already? Yeah, that's you out. You put them out. That's yeah. out. Uh, so the, our Elite Eight, uh, non-copyrighted uh, Elite Eight is uh, chosen, and uh, we are uh, ready and rearing to go with that sometime in the near future. So yep. uh, get your voting uh, fingers ready for that, and uh, come check us out. Your voting finger. Uh, <laughs> sure. And uh, Top Rope Tabletop uh, Friday at 7.00. Uh, it is the premiere. Uh, also, I know. So, so debuting this Saturday is the team of um, Super Hentai and Tyler Klein. They don't mm-hmm. have a team name yet, but it's, it's nope. the first round. See if they get by it. See if they come up with a team name through the rest of this tournament. Uh, it's uh, the promo is already out for them getting together. Um, so, uh, uh, definitely recommend it. That's going to be Saturday at eight o'clock. Tatiana Rose, what do you got going on for plugging? I am on Twitter at Tatiana three underscores Rose. I'm on Instagram at the Tatiana Rose. I'm on Facebook and I have a pro wrestling tea store. You can search the name Tatiana Rose and check out my shirts. Yes, I said shirts. I haven't premiered either of them yet because one of them hasn't appeared in the store yet. Mm-hmm. But it should be coming. It's coming. So it's coming. So they got a lot going on. They got a lot going on. Yeah, they, they got stuff going on. I'm on there. I am a member of Fight Underground. Please be sure to tune in tomorrow for the aftermath of the Ronnie Nicole versus Scarlet match that premiered tonight. Be sure to tune in every Sunday for the Inside Out program, as well as every Thursday night for the live Fight Council meeting. And hopefully, someday soon, maybe you'll see me too. There you go. There you go. How's the recovery going? No cast, no ca- no no cast of any sort there. It was your wrist again, right? Yeah, it was the other wrist this time. God, ah, jeez. Yeah. It wasn't as bad of a break, so I didn't get put in a cast. I got put in a brace. <clears throat> oh, okay. uh, yeah. The bone is healed, and now it's time to start recovery, which means there's a few people who are going to be receiving some hands very soon. <laughs> Make sure to wear the uh, solo ring on your finger so it leaves an indent. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Mad Mike483 on the Twitters. Um, wear a mask. Okay. Wear a fucking mask over your nose, you damn animals. Please, please do so yes. we can all get back to wrestling and calling wrestling and doing these things that we enjoy. Because every time you guys don't wear a mask, we can't go wrestling for two weeks. And we are all so, so very tired of explaining to you that you should care about other people. Mm-hmm. Wear your freaking mask. 
Mm -hmm. Wear your mask, or we'll just start sending indie wrestlers after you to beat the shit out of you. Whoa. I volunteer as tribute to come and beat your ass. Ah! I have. I know. I know at least. At, there's a couple people who just got back into town, and they want. They can't wrestle right now because of your assholes. So wear a mask. Yeah, I I may have to um do unfortunate scheduling things of my wedding because of you assholes. Yeah. So there yeah. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. yeah, my wedding got pushed back probably a couple years because of mine. So a couple yeah. years. <laughs> well, well, here here's the problem. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm I'm not going that far. <laughs> first, uh, first, first, I need to find a fiance. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, my problem. That's my problem. Love, love you, M. Don't. That was. She's not watching anyway. But <laughs> I was say, uh, she just appears in the corner. Like, I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> um, no. Uh, every we we. We were looking at a high, uh, high, called venue, and everyone who got pushed back here is getting both pushed back there. And as long as this goes on, you know, yeah. I, people I, are getting their weddings pushed back. I, definitely. I feel you on that. I feel you on that, sir. So it probably will be 2022, actually, if we're lucky. But wear a mask so I can get married. Mm -hmm. Just, just so someone can suffer with Tony Kincaid and be Mrs. Kincaid. <laughs> Jeez. You're selling it, brother. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.